Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Tuesday, November 4th, 2008. This morning I'd like to go through another one of the widgets in the widget set, but before we get there, let's see how you get back to the UI we were editing. So we have this little UI that just has a button on it, and I want to restart editing it. So it turns out there's a tool here in the launcher called the Resource Finder, and if I bring that up and start typing the class name, it'll start scrolling down to it. Now it doesn't look like there's type ahead, but there actually is. So I select it, edit will bring it up for editing, so I'll do that. And then I'll move these tools over to where I can see them. And the UI over here. Now that I've got all that, you notice we're right back where we were yesterday. Let's start up with one of the other widgets. We'll pick the checkbox. And again, I select it here. I come over here into this window. I push it down by selecting again. And I get my widget down here. Now, over here in properties, I now have the property set for that widget. So I'm going to say my value is the string to define it. And then I'm going to leave the lookup key in catalog alone. That's for internationalization. But I'm going to give it an aspect and an ID. Now again, ID is for changing the state of it at runtime. The aspect is where it will store the actual value, in this case a true or a false. So that's pretty much all I need to do to get this working. If I come over here to details, I can set whether it's initially disabled or visible. I can set whether it's tabbable, which I probably want, which is why it's set by default. Position, again I went over this in a separate screencast. Fly by help, I just have things that I can set to have things pop up. And scrolling over here, validation notification, probably not that exciting for validation in this sense. I mean, it's just a true false value. But notification, I may have things that are useful here. Sometimes when you set up complex forms, whether an individual field is checked or not matters for other options on the form. So I might want to have a notification when this changes. So let's just do that. My, let's call this value changed on boolean and then finally over here we have color and drop target which I'm not going to go through today so now let's go ahead and hit this and do define well first we'll do an install install pushes it back out to be all of the widgets actually on the window and then define we'll do one of two things depending on how I have this set up if I've got this thing checked it's only going to offer to define that one thing. If I want to redefine the entire form, I hit define, it'll define everything. So now having done that, let's go and hit browse. And having hit browse, we'll go in here to actions. Since I changed this code, it didn't redefine this method. But over here, it gave me a, what's called a value holder around a default of false. Now, if you want to know what a value holder is, all I have to do is select this and inspect it. And you see all it really is is the value holder is a wrapper around the actual value with dependence so that it can notify other objects I've changed. There are more complex value holders, value models than this. I'm not going to go through those today. But basically it's just a wrapper object. So let's go ahead and move that out of the way. And we'll do one thing here. We'll do an open. And you're going to see an error come up when I press this. And the reason is that it's telling me that I didn't get value changed on Boolean because well, it turns out I didn't define that method. So I can use the features of the debugger, though, to define that method. And then let's just say dialog warn boolean selection. And we'll hit control S. And we'll restart. And now we get the dialog. So every time we check it, we're going to get that dialog. So uncheck, you get it. Check it, you get it. Kind of annoying, but you see that it's actually firing. So we've gone through notification, we've gone through the checkbox, and you see how those work. The one little nit that you have to be aware of is that if you set up validation or notification methods, the definer doesn't define those methods. In my opinion, it really should, but be aware that it doesn't. It's kind of an interesting little flaw that you need to be aware of. So that's pretty much it for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.